Gary Oldman in a modern spy thriller? Yes, please. Slow Horses is the new series on Apple TV+, Plus, with the first two episodes premiering this weekend. Grab your trench coat and your Minox camera. Let's dive in. Slow Horses follows a team of British intelligence agents who serve in a dumping ground department of MI5 due to their career-ending mistakes. Led by their brilliant but irascible leader, they navigate the espionage world's smoke and mirrors to defend England from sinister forces. So like I said, this stars Gary Oldman, but joining him are Kristen Scott Thomas, Jack Loudon, Olivia Cook, and Jonathan Price. There are going to be six episodes in total, with the first two dropping this weekend. Now, I'm going to do weekly reviews as the episodes just release, kind of in a way to torture myself, because in order to do this review, I had to stop from watching anything beyond episode two, and now I just experience the long weekly wait like everybody else. This show starts out with a bang in an incredibly tense opening sequence. I mean, my adrenaline was peaked almost immediately, and then as the show went along, it went up and down. Gary Oldman plays a tarnished MI5 agent who has been relegated to working with the rejects from the British spy service. He's expertly grumpy, rude, and just generally fed up with life. And because he's been sent to exile, he brings his unhappiness to everybody under his leadership. And Oldman is perfect in the role. He's unshaven, a little overweight. I mean, we rarely see him wearing shoes, which then showcases just how ratty his socks are. And he's pretty much always got a glass of scotch on hand, helping him to stay at this even level of semi-drunk. Now He's abrasive, and we're not supposed to like him, but there's also something that sits behind his eyes that makes me believe there's more to the character than we've been shown. Jack Loudon plays an eager and determined agent who's basically exiled for penance. I mean, we get the sense that his shunned time won't be permanent, but because he's brash and he doesn't really listen to authority, he could find himself turfed for good. I really love him as a character because he's very charismatic, and at least for now, he's been the main driver of the story. And he's witty, too, which I think allows for some quick and funny humor. And a lot of the time, the humor is dry or sarcastic, and not just from Loudon. I mean, but all of the characters really get to share in it to some degree. There are also several moments in this that Loudon sometimes looks like a younger Simon Pegg. I mean, it's not just with the similar hair color, but the way that he creates facial expressions do give off a similar vibe. But because he's young and new to MI5, he's impatient when it comes to serving his time. And this adds a great level of drama and even tension to the narrative. We find him in situations that begin to create some suspense, and because of how the story plays out, there's this growing sense of urgency as well, and that helps to build anxiety. Olivia Cook has a smaller role in the first two episodes, but we get a good sense of who she is and what she's able to bring to the table. She appears to be way more capable than most of those that are exiled, and she's a good match for Loudon's character. They have good chemistry together, and they bounce dialogue off each other in quick but natural ways. Both Kristen Scott Thomas and Jonathan Price are powerhouses when they're on screen, especially Thomas, but neither of them has had an overwhelming amount of screen time yet. The first two episodes will give you almost two full hours of stressful entertainment, and then the next three episodes are going to be shorter, in that low 40-minute mark. The pace of the first two is driving and intense, but it's not rushed. The story maintains a pretty high level of tension, even though not every single scene is filled with action. And sometimes the tension just comes from one person following another. I mean, that game of cat and mouse is exciting and incredibly engaging. And there are other characters within the exiled group, but the majority of them have not really been explored yet, except for Skoskia Reeves. Now, she plays the secretary to Oldman and kind of the house mom to also. Now, apparently one of her tasks is to keep an eye on all of the other misfits, but she's got this quiet snark to her. And I'm also really enjoying her character development as we get glimpses into her life before this assignment. And knowing that there is so much more that yet to be shown and what it has to do with other characters, they're pivotal to the plot. This is very British when it comes to the look and feel of the production, which is something I absolutely love. There are wonderfully framed shots that put a character in the bottom left or right of the screen and then have the rest of that screen taken up by the environment. Now, I don't really see too many other regions using this technique. I think it looks amazing, especially because it's not overused in this. I'm impressed at the level of character investment the show has been able to create in such a short period of time. There are some key moments that work to endear us even more to the players, and when the tensions raise, I am t genuinely concerned for their outcome. Now, something that may tick you off is that the, after giving us two episodes to just get us incredibly hooked on the show, the second episode ends at a climax. It's mean, but it's also very engaging and effective in leaving me wanting more, and I absolutely want more. The humor is subtle but effective, and the mystery and intrigue work to create wonderful drama. 
Our characters are frustrating, impatient, and charismatic, even when they're doing their best to be off-putting. The look and the feel of the episodes are top quality. I mean, exactly what you'd expect from a British series. The storytelling is tight and it's compelling with an urgency that keeps the tension high without rushing the narrative. If you're a fan of spy shows, exciting dramas, dry humor, or really anything British, definitely give this one a go. And while it may be more satisfying to binge it all at once at the end, you're going to rob yourself of weeks of watching enjoyment if you don't tune in as it rolls out. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give episodes one and two of Slow Horses four and a half out of five couches. Are you a fan of British shows? Now, if not, why the heck not? But if you are, do you have a favorite? Mine is Luther with Idris Elba, who's my man crush. But let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.